When I speak with Mac owners, I find that overwhelmingly, one of the most useful parts of the Mac experience is something that people either don't use or don't even know about, and that's Spotlight Search. The problem is Spotlight Search can seem super limited when you first use it, and it absolutely isn't, but you need to know a little bit about it to get the most from it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what you can do in Spotlight Search for Mac. Note that I'm running macOS Sonoma for this video, as the release of that version is just around the corner, and I don't want this video to be out of date. Pretty much everything that we do here, you can also do in macOS Ventura. It just might look slightly different until you update. Okay, let's get into it. There are a number of keyboard shortcuts that you can learn for your Mac to help you get more from Spotlight Search, so let's cover them. The most important keyboard shortcut to begin with is Command and the Spacebar, which opens up Spotlight Search in the first place. Getting into the habit of tapping this quick command will make you more likely to use Spotlight Search in the first place. You can then use the arrows on your keyboard to move up and down the list of returned search results, and holding the command key will allow you to move from one section of search results to another. You can simply hit the return key to open a result from Spotlight Search, be that a file or a photo in the Photos app, or a web search, or whatever it might be. And you can hit the escape key at any time to close out of Spotlight Search. But there are other useful keyboard shortcuts that you should also know about. The tab button lets you bounce between the search window and the results section. If you use the arrow keys to move to a search result and then press Command and B, your computer will run the exact phrase from the search result in your chosen search tool. So for me, it's a quick way of taking a Spotlight Search term and turning it into a Google search. Likewise, you can press and hold Command and I on a search result, and so long as it's a file stored somewhere on your computer, your Mac will show you information about that file. Command and R will open the file that you've selected in a finder window rather than opening the file itself. So maybe you've got a file that you want to open, but you can't remember the name of it, but you can remember the name of a file in the same folder. You could use this as a method of quickly getting to that file. And finally, tapping the spacebar on a file will open the preview window of that file. So if you're looking through lots of PDFs, for example, this is a good way of quickly checking to see if the one that you're looking at is the one that you want or not. Command spacebar is, I think, the quickest and most effective way to use Spotlight Search, but there is another method, and that's to use the magnifying glass, which you can see in the upper right corner of the screen. Simply tap on that, and your Spotlight Search bar will appear just the same way as it would via the keyboard shortcut. So we know that if we press Command and Spacebar, the Spotlight Search bar will appear, and it does this in the same default position, middle of the screen horizontally, and about three quarters of the way up the screen. But you can move it if you like. Simply click and hold, then drag the bar around the screen to where you want it. And the good thing about this is that once you've done that, the search bar will remain there the next time that you open it up. So if you prefer it in the bottom left or the top right of the screen, you can find something that works for you. And if you want to reset it back to its original state at any time, simply use Command and Spacebar to open Spotlight Search. Then in the upper right menu bar, click and hold on the magnifying glass for just a moment. This will reset the search bar back to where it originally was. By the way, if you prefer to have content like this in a written format, there's a PDF version of this video complete with screenshots, and you can access it along with all other PDFs I've created, plus future ones, for just $5 a month. You can either scan the QR code that you can see on screen or follow the link in the description of this video to learn more. You can both preview and drag files from Spotlight Search into other parts of your Mac, which is great if you're looking for something in particular, like here in this email example. I want to find a photo I took at the beach, so I can simply open Spotlight Search and type in beach. If I scroll down a little, you can see the Photos from App section, which in this case is essentially showing me all the beach photos my Mac has found in my photo library. You can click to select one and use the spacebar to open and close the preview, allowing you to locate the image that you want. When you've found it, simply click and hold, then drag it from Spotlight Search right into the email. You can see for yourself just how quick and easy this makes it to find and work with items on your Mac. You can use the term kind with a colon immediately after it to narrow your searches down to only specific kinds of files. So for example, if you input kind colon app, you can see that whatever I type immediately after that, Spotlight will focus the search only to apps that I've got installed on my Mac. But there are loads of other things that you could use here. You could input kind JPEG to focus a search on that specific format of image, and you can still input a keyword as part of your search. 
you can input kind folder to narrow your search down to folders on your Mac. You could input kind pages to only search for pages files. The same would go for numbers or Keynote or even Excel or PowerPoint. You could input kind contact to focus your search to people in your contacts list. You could input kind event to focus your search on items from within your calendar. Kind exe would focus on exe files. Kind font would search within the fonts installed on your computer. Kind image would search for images in general, while kind QuickTime would search for QuickTime files. You can apply natural language when searching to get specific about things like times. For example, I could type emails today to see only the emails that I've received today. But I could also type something like emails Sunday to see emails that are received on any Sunday. And you can see that the top result is an email that was received on the most recent Sunday. You could, however, use a term like emails last Thursday, which would recognize that you're trying to find emails from the most recent Thursday and only show you those. You could search for something like beach photos this year, which would return only the photos of beaches that were taken in the year that you're in, as you can see from the dates if I preview some of these. On the flip side, you could say beach photos last year, and your Mac would show you beach photos that you took in the previous year. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, why not consider signing up to my newsletter, The Proper Weekly, which you can do via the link in the description of this video or by scanning the QR code on screen now. The newsletter goes out each Friday and I include some tech news from the week, a behind the scenes of what's happening here on the channel, as well as a tip for an item in the Apple ecosystem. Spotlight search in macOS Sonoma has pretty rich information when it comes to searching for popular things like musicians or movies and TV shows. So for example, if I search for a musical artist, you can see that many will now have their own dedicated page, complete with links to their catalog in Apple Music, the ability to watch music videos, and of course, find out information about them. If I search for Kendrick Lamar, you can see that as I scroll down, there's even a section where you can find out where he's performing next, and clicking there takes you through to Shazam. If I search for a movie like Oppenheimer, you can see things like where it's showing nearby, get information about the cast, and read reviews. If I search for a TV show like Succession, you can see similar information, including where you can watch it, although I've noticed that this defaults to buying or renting it on Apple TV, which here in the UK wouldn't actually be the most cost-effective way of viewing this show, but I guess you can't blame Apple for pushing you to their own streaming service here. You can very quickly and easily see the weather in your location or elsewhere using Spotlight Search. So for example, if I simply type weather, you can see that Spotlight will show me the weather in the location that it knows I'm currently in. But you could specify a location if you like. So if I type weather Manchester, you can see that I get the result that I want. You could also use natural language to specify when you'd like the weather for. You could type in weather tomorrow or weather Saturday, for example, and Spotlight will return the results. And you can use a combination of those things. So weather Saturday Orlando, for example, to give you the weather in Orlando this coming Saturday. Clicking into the result will take you to the weather app where you can then view the information in more detail if you wish. You can perform conversions using Spotlight Search. So for example, if I were to type in $2,000, written the way that you can see it on screen now, you can see that my Mac immediately recognizes my location and therefore assumes that I likely want to convert $2,000 into British pounds, which it does. But I could simply keep typing if I wanted to and change that to euros. And again, Spotlight Search will recognize this and give me the conversion. Or I could type in a GBP amount, and Spotlight will assume that I probably want to convert that to US dollars, but again, I can easily change this if I wish. You can perform maths calculations right from within Spotlight Search, like here, where I've carried out a multiplication sum. This also works with distances. So here, for example, where I've input 55 yards, and Spotlight assumes that I want to change this to meters. This also works with temperatures. So for here in the UK, I could quickly input a Celsius temperature to work out how I'd explain that to a friend in the US who's used to working with Fahrenheit. There are a number of other really useful searches that you can run in Spotlight. You could search for a local business or restaurant to get directions as well as view information about them. You could type in a phrase like coffee near me to get results for places to go for coffee in your local area. You could type in a flight number to get up-to-date information about that flight status. 
You can type in the name of an app and hit enter to immediately open that app. This is one that I use several times each day as I find it so much quicker to do this rather than going into applications or even using the dock. You can even use Spotlight Search to open specific parts of the settings menu, including like I've shown here, where you can use it to quickly toggle settings on and off, like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Typing in something like accessibility will allow you to quickly open up not only settings, but specifically the accessibility part of settings. Another great little search you can run is to operate a Siri shortcut and set a timer. So if you type start timer and then hit return to take you through to the shortcut, you can see that you can input the amount of time in seconds, minutes, and hours. Once you've set this up, the timer will run in the top of the screen. So if you're someone who likes to use something like the Pomodoro method of staying productive, this could be a really handy little shortcut to know. Finally, an important thing to be aware of with Spotlight Search is that you've given it the access that it needs to be able to work effectively. You do this by opening settings and then choosing Siri and Spotlight Search. If you scroll down, you can see all of these checkboxes with each one representing a category that will be included or excluded from your search results. So in theory, if you know that you never wanted to include apps or external websites, you could tap to disable these. I tend to leave everything toggled on personally and just disregard whatever results I'm not interested in at any specific time. Also, if you tap on Spotlight Privacy at the bottom of this page, you can choose specific folders on your Mac to not be searched using Spotlight Search if you wish. So there you go, that's Spotlight Search for Mac, a super powerful search tool that's baked right into your computer ready for you to begin using. You just need to know what to search for. What do you think? Any good searches that I should have included here? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.